Syndicate. So this game got banned in Australia. What the fuck? No! Released in 2012, Syndicate was a soft reboot of the cult classic isometric strategy game of the same name. So, obviously, EA saw fit to change it into an FPS. This was a terrible idea. To cut a long story short, the game flopped. Hard. But does that mean it's a bad game? <laughs> I grew up with copies of the original Syndicate games, but I never really played them that much. I do have fond, albeit foggy, memories of playing Syndicate Wars in between Pip Sun and Alpha Centauri. However, there was something about the theme, the pacing, the environments that really resonated with me. In retrospect, it reminds me of Blade Runner mixed with Commando, but at the time it was something new and mysterious. These original titles were made by the much-beloved Bullfrog Games, who are now, unfortunately, just another corpse in EA's mass grave. This is actually what led to Syndicate 2012, as it seems after almost 18 years, EA realised that they had been sitting on a bunch of Bullfrog's IPs, and figured they'd better do something with them. So they got on their phones to their buddies at Starbreeze, and asked them to make a Syndicate game. Subjectively, the universe isn't a bad fit for an FPS game. Not so much as, say, XCOM would be. <coughs> and EA had historically done quite well with strategy to FPS conversions. I admit, when I saw the game's advertisements, I was curious. I mean, after all, I was in college, which is the best time to be curious about things that will likely leave you hurting. So, I asked a kindly old gentleman with a wooden leg if he could procure me a copy. Customer off of the starboard bow! Dead game for ye! Straight out of Davy Jones's Google Drive! Uh oh oh sailing. Let's jump right in. Firstly, let's address the glowing white elephant in the room. The game is positively drenched in blue. Every surface, every window, every light bulb is a hellish eye-straining glare. This is especially tragic considering the otherwise impressive world design and art direction that is washed away under the white glow. You're gonna see some serious shit. Oh boy, the plot. It should go without saying, but spoilers from here on out. In a dystopian future, mega corporations run the world and now openly wage war of each other using heavily augmented field agents. You are one such agent, Miles Kilo. Miles Kilo? God damn, what a stupid name. With your fancy Dart 6 chip jammed into your skull, you have the ability to slow time, shoot harder, and take less damage. All this is somehow powered by your adrenaline. Kilogram wakes up getting his ass handed to him by some douchebag wearing a biker helmet. Not a great way to wake up. He politely asks him to stop. Dropped into the world with no guidance, we make our way through this abandoned building. After smashing through a door and surfing on a dude down a flight of stairs, we catch a couple of goons off guard and get to use the slow-mo dart overlay. Did I mention that we shoot at almost full speed while it's active? Because somehow our adrenaline makes guns cycle faster. Continuing the fight outside, we get our hands on our first useful weapon, the assault rifle. Now would be a good time to go over the game's alt fire system. Almost every weapon supports two fire modes. In the case of the assault rifle, this switches between powerful semi-auto shots and automatic fire. Technically, I could have shown you this with the pistol and its burst fire mode, but eh, well, it's shit. Fleeing from some more guards, we smash through a roof and find out that this was all just a simulation. Oh. I'm pretty sure those civilians were real. Here we meet Lily, Jack, and Merritt. Now cleared for field work, the Kilomancer has issued his first mission. A straightforward job. To assassinate a scientist working for a rival company. While heading over to Los Angeles, Kilo Crunch is busy dicking around in VR to learn the suicide ability. Show them their co-workers for affinity accounts. Oh god, it's all feet! Uh... 
Nito. Back in the real world, Kilo Queen and Merit hop off the VTOL and split up. Ah, here we see the standard corporate performance review. Looks like this guy's not been reading his quarters. Let's give him a hand. We'll just hack into this guy's head, raise his score a little bit, uh, oh. Ooh. Huh. Kiltastrophe continues his bloody path through the facility, murdering, I mean, liquidating, everyone in his path. When we intercept an encrypted signal between our target and some mysterious person, hmm, entering the room, we liquidate the fuck out of the target. Checking him over, we see that he has a custom chip in his head. Warning, the following is kind of gross. So we're just gonna stab this rod of roboworms right into the nerd's ear and rip the chip right out of his fucking brain. Yeah, I'm sure that's hygienic. The chip gives us our first upgrade points. You only get a finite number of these during the game, which we can use to unlock different upgrades and abilities and... Uh, hey... This is reminding me of something... Something else. I never asked for this. Huh. I just noticed how these guys' armor sort of looks like ancient Japanese designs. That's a nice touch. Oh, no! Don't kill me! No witnesses. Outside, a short battle leads us to our extraction point, where we get to watch our escape helicopter crash. Shit. Okay, leave plan B up to me. I hate plan B. After another trip to VR land to learn how to explode guns, Super Kilio explores an elevator shaft and discovers that the mysterious voice was Lily. Oh my god, we're barely 20 minutes into the game and the treatment was like a big twist. Breaking out of the shaft and into a nightclub, Kibble's personal assistant tells us to dig in for a tough fight. And dig in we do. At the train station, Merritt has already begun commandeering an entire passenger train for us to escape on. The Kilopractor instead just runs around resetting people's necks to the dead position. The music here is actually pretty good. A little generic, but I like it. And with the train pulling in, we go to board it and... Oh. Uh-oh. Well, I hope he's okay. Oh no. Hey kids, remember Dubstep? This track was Skrillex's main contribution to the project. My guess is EA hoped his name would have drawn in those HIP KIDS they wanted to advertise the game towards. I'm just gonna replace it with something a little nicer on the ears. Ah, that's better. Enemy agents act as the boss fights in this game, each of them with their own abilities indicative of the kind of research their respective megacorp has been pursuing. In the case of this asshole, he slides around the arena and uses a hologram system to project multiple copies of himself. He's like some sort of extremely dedicated Naruto cosplayer. Well, let's see if he can outrun my bullets. After whittling down his health, we're finally able to hack into his chip and fry his fucking brain. Get fucked no jitsu. Aboard the train, we find that Merritt's got a migraine, so he books a plane to take him to Spain, where he can meet Bane. Just kidding. Instead, he decides to take his bad mood out by executing everyone on board. Holy fuck, dude. Kellogg's Crunch continues down the train and finds that, uh... Oh, Lord, that thing stinks! After liquidating the remaining guards on the train, we find that they've left something magical. Here. We. Go! Fuck. 
Returning to the train, the Aspari guards aren't done with us yet. They decide to send jet bikes after us. Kidney disease tests how well they fly in an atmosphere of 80% lead. Out in the fresh air, Aspari's getting tired of us wrecking their shit and hire out the Half-Life 2 gunship to attack us. But we don't need no fancy RPG to take it down. Lunch break! We make a short trip into the office to meet Jack, where he reveals he's worried the other corporations are about to go to war, and that he knows about Lily's treason, but doesn't want to kill her. Not yet. Blah blah blah, Mr. Freeman. Wait, that's it? This was just a glorified cutscene, what the fuck? I have our allies in range. Airdropping onto a tower adjacent from Lily's home, Merit and Carbohydrate spy on her and her phone calls. Just because I don't want blood running in the streets, you think- Until a rival company busts in to kidnap her. Well, shit. Ziplining across the keto diet gives chase. I'm on sniper support, Kilo got you back all the way. <laughs> Here we encounter oh, shit, our first sorry. Liquid Armor sorry. Trooper. These mini-boss type units have a personal shielding system that makes them immune to all damage until it's hacked. Take it, boy. However, we manage to snag the shotgun from him, and oh god is it a good one. The primary fire mode is a semi-auto meat grinder, whilst the secondary is a pump action explosive slug. Oh yeah. The rival agent, aware of our pursuit, blows up a gas main to try and stop us. King rips a shard of security glass out his arm like it's fucking nothing. Oh, he's in for it now. Our pursuit continues, with more Cayman Global Mercs lining up for the meat grinder. Now we encounter our first power armor enemy. They're basically just tougher liquid armor troopers, albeit slower and armed with heavier weapons. Oh God. Ah! Yoink. Minigun in hand, we push the enemy agents back to their dropship, just in time to catch it for a lift. We're going surfing. Give us Zoolander, we will kill you! We surf the gunship all the way back to Cayman Global's floating arcology. Seriously, look at the size of this thing. Kerbal Space Program jumps off the gunship and smashes through a window, which somehow isn't noticed by the single guy working in this office. Escape camouflage complete. We belong. Oh god, I hope this isn't going to be one of those forced stealth missions. Oh! I guess we go loud then. After treating the local TSA agents to a little bit of pinch and tickle, Pounds gets into a firefight with a power armor trooper, armed with a micro-missile launcher. I want that. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Winners don't use drugs. After losing our rocket launcher, we fight across some jet launch bays and meet our first ECM trooper. These jerks jam our hacking powers, and will corrupt our HUD if we get too close to them. They're introduced alongside a single liquid armor trooper, who we can't defeat until both of them are down. It's a tough way to teach the player, but effective. We enter an observation chamber and get to watch as Lily is dropped off onto the base. Time to get our scientists back. Whoa, these guys seem really ready for war. I don't remember there being any out-and-out -out warfare in the original Syndicate games. Just agent operations. Oh fuck. The enemy agent gets the jump on us and we get kicked over a banister, losing all our weapons in the fall. Time for another agent fight. I'm just gonna call this guy No Eyes. No Eyes jumps between platforms, spamming rockets and occasionally throwing ECM bombs at us. Our only way of fighting back is to hack his rockets to send them flying back at him. Problem is, No Eyes can hack them too. 
So King Shamer and Noise play a game of rocket ping pong until Noise screws up and gets his ass blasted. Uh oh. Thanks, Lily. Wait, how did you escape? Corpse Grinder then uses the worm stick to steal No Eyes' chip, and he and Lily make their escape on a conveniently parked dropship. We can't even get the blues right. Touching down in the slums under the Eurocorp towers, the pair decide to ditch their military grade dropship for some reason and head back on foot. I'll meet up with you. <sighs> What's that smell? It's, it smells like a double cross. Or maybe it's just this sewer. Exploring the down zone is a strange experience, as this is arguably the closest to the original Syndicate we've gotten yet. Everything is dirty, wet, and dark, and every other wall is plastered in neon advertisements for guns, booze, and prostitutes. Hell, they even drop hints to the Church of the New Epoch here. You turbo nerds watching this will know what that means, and will be just as confused as I am. That implies this game is on the Syndicate Wars timeline, and that means Eurocorp- uh, never mind. Travelling onwards, Captain Crunch enters the unchipped Subverter territory, and immediately gets caught in a trap. Hey yo, what the fuck? Waking up a nondescript time later, Pepsi Jensen coughs up a little blood and gets into a fight with the locals. After a short while, our chip reboots and we realize something. Half of our hack powers don't work here, because these people don't have chips to hack, but their guns still do. It's dark, but he's gotta be there. Right behind you. Our rampage continues. Turns out, sending poorly equipped militia to fight a heavily augmented super soldier is a bad idea. This section of the game is enjoyable, but not particularly memorable. Lots of chained arenas against larger groups of squishy enemies. The aesthetic here, however, mixed with the rate of combat, really do remind me of the original games. Out of the sewers, we find a murdered Aspari executive. Entering the slums, we find that the gangers have stealth suits and EMP mines. How in the hell did they get such advanced tech? Well, we can exploit the mines to short out the stealth suits, or just use our dark vision to spot them. Is that a... Oh yes it is. Hmm, slamming. Amazon Kindle continues to pursue Lily into a rebel-controlled factory, where they've set up an unhackable auto-turret. Guess we're gonna have to use these moving boxes as cover. Hello, this is Marin. What the hell kind of mess have you gotten yourself into? I got your cast and I I'm on my way. I can't believe you haven't killed that bitch yet. Marin out. About damn time, bro. Here we find out the big twist. Lily was behind the leaks, and has effectively started an intercorporate war. Now she's seeking refuge with the rebel leader Locos and his down zoner gang. Well, time to take Loco down. He gleefully runs around the arena cloaked, throwing EMP grenades at us and doing next to no damage. Honestly, the worst part of this fight is that we're stuck having to use this shitty revolver on him. It just takes forever. After an extensive lead infusion, he decides to go full Aloha snack bar on us. Nice try, asshole. Eh, but at least we can extract a chip from his PDA. You killed him! Why did you do that? Why didn't you just kill me? Well, excuse me, bitch, but he was kind of shooting me first. Is this what you want? More death? Come on, do it! Pull the trigger! 
Terminator. I built that chip you carry. You don't think I'd put some safeguards in there? Our little reunion gets interrupted by Merritt blowing off the roof, and Kippers decides to take a quick nap. Hey, asshole. Next, we get a flashback, I think? Syndicate forces bust open an apartment, kill two civvies, and acquire a young human asset. I think they wanted to imply that the kid was Kidlo, but something's not right. What I don't get is that this scene is supposedly from the perspective of someone, an agent by the looks of it, and Jack doesn't look that much younger in it either. Time for a game theory! I don't think this is meant to be representing us as a child, but rather showing that the Kilo Nappa does this for merit, which makes us out to be kind of a giant dick. But wait, no, this is Starberries we're talking about, so they wouldn't have fucking thought about that. Wow, a poorly thought out cutscene in a badly written Starberries game. Who would have fucking thought? Breaking out of human resources, we also free Lily for some reason. Neelus is in no state to fight. So Lily instructs him to climb into the- The Vitruvian can restore you. Huh. I thought it was called the Leonardo device. <laughs> Lily reveals that Jack has a kill switch built into the chip, the chip she designed, and that he'll use it to kill every single Dart 6 user. For some reason. Before we can stop to ask for more explanation, Cayman Global begins their attack. Well, go big or go home, I guess. We're off to confront Jack. The following levels are a brutal slog between Cayman Global and Eurocorp, with Kilo and Stitch just trying to fight their way past them. You know, now that I think about it, Lily kind of reminds me of Alex from Half-Life. The way she fights alongside you, her ability to hack open doors, even her clothes. Everything except, you know, being a likable character. We find some new weapons here, a laser rifle, and a revolver. The laser rifle is... bad. The beam mode is too weak, and the blast mode is too slow. Kind of a disappointment, really. The revolver, on the other hand, is a beast of a gun. Easily one of the strongest in the entire game. Its only scarcity is the weakness of its ammo. Wait, f Its only weakness is the scarcity of its ammo. Getting split up from Lily again, the trench coat cowboy makes his way up to the tower block's elevator shaft. Another Eurocorp agent shows up. Agent Crane? Who, who the fuck is this guy? He uses the homing rifle and will hack our cover down, but otherwise he's pretty weak. Well, if he wasn't dead before, he is now. Detecting a remote purge protocol from Jack Denham's office. Oh shit, I guess Lily wasn't lying. The fights at this point in the game teeter between intense and tedious. I admit, I got pretty pissed with how often I died at this part of the game especially considering the lack of a real health bar and the unskippable death animations that occur every time you die. Or, you know, you could just chain takedowns to exploit vulnerability. Kicking, snapping, and hacking our way across a balcony, we access an emergency bridge to cross over to the... other Eurocorp tower. Okay. The corporate troopers try and hold us off, but at this point, Killer Seven is an unstoppable force of murder. They've invented their own doom. Jack starts to question us, asking us why we're here. After realizing we're working for Lily, he sends Merritt and two other agents to deal with us. Merritt stays above, firing down on us with rockets and a minigun, whilst the twins try to flush us out of cover. The twins are both directly linked to Merit, and each time they go down, so long as he has line of sight to them, they'll eventually get back up. Only by breaking this link with cover items can we finally put them down. <laughs> Rookie agents are no match for the kiloton. Merit is reasonably pissed at this, and jumps down to face us one-on-one. -on -one. You're just a pile of meat with a crappy chip. Finally, a worthy opponent. We duck and weave between cover, striking and retreating, and with each layer of armor we peel off him, he just gets angrier. 
the rage of a dying lion. But we're angrier. We're the newer model. I think this game was meant to have some sort of message about rediscovering your lost humanity, but all it's really taught us is to dehumanize yourself and face to bloodshed. Jack continues to lecture us on the fundamentals of economics, of need as well as greed, of human behavior. But we're no longer human. He saw to that. You can't fight the future. Is that the best you can do? You think whatever down zone custom wetware that bitch put in your head is gonna crack my chip? Remote override detected. Something is wrong. Oh, God, they're here. God damn you, Kim. I gave you everything, didn't I? Look around you, Kim. You see what she's done? The towers are burning. Eurocorp is burning. Because of her. Because of you. I made you, Kilo. I had you custom wired for a purpose, and I can pull your fucking plug like any other machine. When you and that bitch are both dead and buried, we're gonna rebuild the enclaves on your stupid down zone bones. Unmarked graves. Under poured concrete kilo. You've got my promise on that. No. Not like this. Such a shame. God damn, what a bitch. Sorry, Kilo. Guess you got used again. Oh, you bitch. I lied about the chip meltdown. Sorry. I needed you up here to take Denim down. I wonder what you'll do now that you don't have any orders. I don't know. Probably serial killings, I guess. And that was Syndicate. A short and deeply troubled reboot that tried its best but failed before it even started. Games like Human Revolution, which had come out a year prior, massively overshadowed it, and the game quickly fell from collective memory, EA quietly brushing the mistake under the rug. Kinda reminds me of Haze in a way. Well that's over four hours of my life I'm never gonna get back. I would have liked to have touched on the co-op campaign, but this video is already long enough, and I'm pretty certain the servers are long dead anyways. I think next time, I'm going to play something fun. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.